Okay, let's see if that worked. I think it should. Right. I should put my Facebook page back on. Let's look. Come on, Facebook. Wiki wiki. Thank you for waiting, everybody. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know. The phone did an update last night. Hi, Janet. The phone did an update and it automatically locked into portrait style. And even though I was trying to open it again, it was telling me I didn't have permission. So, but I think, I think that's straight and I think we're here. Yay! Thank you for your patience. <laughs> so, hello and welcome to Tuesday. <laughs> oh, dear me. Right, let me just make this screen a little bit bigger. Hi, Laurie. Okay. Now I've lost comments. But that's... Uh, I'm happy to lose comments. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, I should have looked. Uh, I knew we'd done a, an update overnight, but now I know why. So let me open comments again. Right, I'm here, I'm here. I'm going to just have a drink of tea. <laughs> so I need, need something. Okay. So how is everybody? Are you having a nice week? I see it's still as windy here, Laurie, as it was last night when we had stamp class. Oh, but at least the sun's shining, the sky is blue, and we're having a great day. Okay, so the card for today, I'm going to revisit this card that I made a little while back. And it was a card that I cased from Rhonda Wade um, two, three years ago, I think. And I'd never sent it out. It was sort of a prototype that I was making. And it's a just a nice little fun fold card. But there are so many things that I want to change on it. So I thought tonight would be the perfect time to change it. So it's got a little ribbon closure here. And then it has this little flap. And you can see how long ago I made it look. This is all discoloured. Uh, and it opens like this and this is just designer series paper and it has no it's just like a little front fold flap card and it's got a little um, edging down it and then in here Laurie I should be drinking red wine with you <laughs> you probably thought I already had been because I couldn't get the Facebook to work oh dear me but we're all right now 125 very simple birthday cards for your daughter's boyfriend. Janet, I take my hat off to you. Uh, hi Jane, you missed nothing apart from 20 minutes of me trying to get my phone to work. It did an update last night, it automatically put the portrait lock on, uh, wouldn't let me continue until I'd said no, I didn't want Apple Pay included and then it wouldn't link to my Facebook page. So, but we're here now. And we're looking at a card that I made a couple of years ago, which actually I cased from Rhonda Wade and hers was very pretty. Mine was not. So I thought I'd get it out today and we'll just make it look better. Okay, so I was explaining that I made it a long while ago. And until I opened the flap, I honestly thought this was like a beige and white paper. I, di I didn't remember it. And that's because really it was pink, look. <laughs> and all of these little arrows are bits of it that I didn't like. So they're the bits we're going to change. Now, let's start over here. I'd coloured this with our blends. And I loved it for the front. I thought it was really pretty. But this was the first time I'd coloured with blends. And I didn't realise that they soaked through the paper. So I couldn't send it to anybody because all you can see is the colouring on the back. 
So this little sticky arrow obviously meant, you know, I didn't do that very well. The next sticky arrow is this, and I felt like it was too wide for my shape. I wanted it to be a bit narrower. The next one was this score line, because where it's scored, it should have been level with the edge of the card. And can you see, it's about an eighth of an inch out. Oh look, there's another one on the back. I'll think about what that one is in a moment. Then there's this one. The length of the flap means that you can see it and it protrudes past this white part. I didn't like that either. And then the bit on the back, what have I done that for? Oh, I know. I put the ribbon all the way across and it made it bulky here. You can feel it. So I felt like if I was going to write on it, I would write on that bumpy lump and then, you know, my writing would be terrible on it. No more. No, no, that's all of them. So I'm revisiting, revamping, and I'm going to make it a whole lot better. So what I decided to do, oh, I just, my comments, uh, my comments aren't coming up automatically. I have to keep doing. <laughs> Thanks, Jane. Okay, so I'm going to use some of our retiring items. And unfortunately, in May, Sweet as a Peach will retire. And you know how much I love this. This was my first Facebook Live set and I've loved it ever since. I love the paper, but the rest of the paper that I've got is chopped up into um, Love It Chop It sizes. And I thought I might want to make an envelope as well. And these aren't big enough for an envelope. So I'm still using Sweet as a Peach, but I'm not using the Aura Peach Designer Series paper. And so what I decided was I went through my box and I thought that this hand penned was quite pretty because it's got that peachy colour in it. So when you make this, you have to like both sides of your Designer Series paper. So don't be thinking, oh, I only like that side. You know, I hate the other. That's not the piece to use. You need to use something because you're going to see the both sides. Okay, so I'm going to use this one. And I'll need another piece if we've got time to make a card. No, not make a card. Make an envelope. Okay, so I'm going to get the other piece out as well. Because for that, we need a 6 by 12 piece. Not sure if that might be 6 by 12. Hmm, doesn't look it, does it? No. Looks a bit wider than that. Okay. So I've got my card. I've got my cardstock ready. I'm going to use the pale papaya because that's the colour of the orangey, sort of pale orange in here. So, and it's still peachy. And this is one of those sets that I always buy at the beginning of a new ink colour coming. I buy the pack that has all the colours and then I decide which ones I love and then I buy a full pack of whichever one I love. So I'm using up a few bits like that. Yeah, uh, where did you get the plastic box for the Peach Designer Series paper? Oh, it's a stamping box. Um, let me see where I just threw that. It, it's just a stamping box. You can buy these, you can buy just the stamp boxes from stamping up and that's all that's all it is I just cut the paper and a whole pack of paper will cut uh, sort of fit into here and I also use one for my chamois so I use them for all sorts of things but it's really handy for paper lorry so I've got that and I'm also going to use a little bit of calypso coral for an accent and I've got a couple of pieces here that, I don't know if you can see, but they're like sun faded on the edge. But I think I'll be able to just use this side because I only want sort of a quarter of an inch strip. So I'm just going to use a little bit of that. And let me see, what else am I using that's retiring? Oh, I'm using some of my dyes. Um, I'm going to use the bird some more. There is actually a piece in here. I'm not going to use this one because it's a bit crumpled. But I'm going to use the little edge strip from here. 
I'm going to use Hippo and Friends because they're retiring as well. And why have I got that one out? Oh, I know why. If you didn't have like an edge strip like this, I was just going to show you that on scalloped con contours here, you could use something like this just as your edging. It doesn't have to be the one from the birds. Okay, so I better get a wriggle on because I've got lots to do. And I spent 20 minutes trying to get onto, uh, onto Facebook. Okay. So I'm going to do my cutting and my die cutting first. So I need my pale papaya. And this is the colour that I'm going to do my base with. So here I've done it, it almost looks like the smoky slate. So let me find my my paper that says how, how big to cut it. So I need five and a quarter by five and a half. I'm going to cut it straight down the middle. Pop that piece away because we don't need this piece. And it's a nice half card size. And then I'm going to cut this one down to five and a quarter. Because we only have that small flap on the front. The one that I made originally, I think it might have been a bit bigger than that. Let me just see. Yeah, it was cut at five and a half. But because I'm putting a little edge on there as well as the fancy edging, I didn't want it to be too wide and come out too far. So I'm going to make that just a bit narrower as well. So you can probably see now. Oh, look, that looks the same because I had it the wrong way around. It's going to be one of those nights, ladies. I'm really sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to have just this narrower piece at the front. And I'm going to score it just at an inch. Let's see. It's an inch, right? If I want this to be four and a quarter, is it five and a quarter? Yes, it is. Okay. So that is going to be the front of our card and that looks a really narrow flap but because I'm putting that Calypso coral on and then the little um, birds and branches piece then it will make it wider. Okay. So that's our base here. I'm going to cut a piece of that Calypso coral. Honestly, you'd think it was the very first time I've done a video, wouldn't you, today? So, okay. Is this the same length? Oh, it is, that's perfect. I'm just gonna cut off, maybe I'll do half an inch and then glue it back a little bit. Just that half an inch is easier to apply than a quarter. And can you see, I'm just gonna have this piece on here and then the little white birds and branches piece. Okay, so that's that. I'm gonna cut my designer series paper while I've got the trimmer out and and is there a right way and a wrong way to that? Yeah, I think it goes that way, doesn't it, really? So let's cut our designer series paper. We're going to need it four and a quarter by five and a half. So I'm going to cut a piece off at five and a half. And let's cut a piece off at four and a quarter. And then this will go onto the front as well. So we'll have this. I'm going to have the dotty side here. Okay. And then the little coordinating piece here. And then our little white birds and branches. So that's as much of that as I need to cut, I think, at the moment. Yeah. Let's get, let's get a little die cut going. Um, Oh, look at these grubby things. Let, let's have some new ones here. I'm going to put my white one on. Just... Okay. Right, so here's a new pack of mini cutting plates. Let's have a new setting. They did look particularly grubby, didn't they? got some white pieces um, just like little scraps so I'm going to take out the die what's everybody else making this week 
Now, we had class last night and we were doing Wink of Stella things. Um, so I'd sort of designed for that class, uh, but I haven't, haven't done much else since the wedding. Oh, I'm just going to turn this around so I can see it. This is, let me see, this is actually an inch wide. I don't need it as wide as that. But I'm, so I'm just going to leave a little gap down the left hand side because that's the piece that we'll glue it on with. really quite long. There we are. Let's put this on. So I know Janet's made 125 cards. Spent spent all week making them, I would think. Oh, there we go. That's not quite straight. Let's, let's just straighten it up. There we go. I'm just going to turn it around this way now. Okay. I'm going to take that out. And it won't cut all the way down just because um, I've got a longer piece of card, but that's okay. And then while we're doing die cuts, I know I'm going to need the piece for our front. I'm going to put that in there and I'm using Hippo and Friends. I'm going to use the biggest one of these. So Jane's finishing commission cards. Oh, good for you, getting a commission. Nice. And Easter cards. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're busy. Busy, busy. Yeah, I'm just going to put this on a slight angle just so that it, it doesn't bump as this goes through and it doesn't stress the machine. Okay, let's find find the top. Just got it a little bit offset. What are you working on, Laurie? Okay, I don't think I need to cut anything else. Mm. No, so let's pop this away. Get some room on the desk. Okay, we are ready to go. We don't need those dies anymore. Let's pop the bird one back. I don't need that one. It's a really pretty set, this. I loved this one. I've made so many cards with that sort of on a, a plain white circle and then this cut out in white as well. And the little image in here or a sentiment in there. That's, that's really pretty. I don't think this is a set I'm going to get rid of. I, even when it's retired, I think I'm just gonna keep it because I do use it a lot. Okay, so that's for our stamping. Well, let's pop these. So, oh, I do need another little piece. I need that little flap. I need this piece. Right, and I'm going to cut that a bit smaller. So, let's have a look. Right, let's see. I'm going to cut. What size was that flap? Let's see. Let's just pick up a ruler. was three inches. I'm going to try it at two. I don't really want to see it so much. Oh, how big is it? Two by five and a quarter. Yeah. Oh, that's five and a half. We're halfway there. So two. And five and a quarter. Let's trim that down. I might need to trim it some more yet. I don't know. I just don't want, I don't want to have this where I can see it underneath the white. It doesn't look quite right. I need to cut the white as well. Let's have a little look for a piece of paper over here. So our white piece will just be a plain sort of four and a quarter by five, uh, four by five and a half. No, four by five and a quarter. Just so that it fits inside. 
so four by five and a quarter. I was going to make it as big as the base, but I actually do like that little gap all the way around, so let's do this. Right, now I think we're ready. Um, I just need to score this little flap. I'm going to score it at four. And we'll see. It only gives me a little bit for it to fold over. But I don't think I need very much. We're going to attach the paper last. I'm going to put the little little trim bits on first. So I'm just going to put some glue down here. I should have watched the video that I made a couple of years ago when I made this. And uh, if I'd done that, then I would have known exactly what sizes I made. I would. And I could have written it down and just changed it straight away. So Laurie's making an anniversary card. Nice. You should use one of the nice ones that we made yesterday as well. As you made some lovely cards. Okay, let's chop this off. Not sure how long this is. I didn't even measure it. It, oh, that's okay because it's a bit too long, look. And that's what we want. I don't think I'm going to leave a little white edge. I think I'm going to have it right up to the edge there. If you wanted, you could leave a little bit to be seen like this. Depends on, on what your, um, your border looks like. Actually, that's quite pretty. Yeah, I think I will leave just a little bit. And let's put a little bit down here. And then I'll cut it off. Once it's adhered to this little piece, then I'll cut it off. And that way, I know I've got it on straight. And it's, you know, just in the middle. edges off. And can you see there's a tiny little bit of Calypso coral peeping over as well so I'm going to trim that at the same time. There we go. Oh that seahorse card would look really nice Laurie. Yeah. I'm sure they saw those. If they went scuba diving in Maui, they would see those. I can't remember. Which colour did you do your seahorses? Um, okay, so this will go on here. Oh, doesn't that look nice? Just with that little, that little accent there. I like that. And then I'm going to look at the ribbon. Because on the first one, I had the ribbon sort of across this whole piece. And then the white piece, oh, I don't think that's the white piece I've just cut, no. The white piece went over, but it was a really bulky ribbon I used. Well, this is not as bulky. Hmm, maybe, maybe we could just still leave that. I was going to cut it and just glue a little bit here and a little bit there. But actually, I don't think we need to. I could leave it just like that. I'm going to put it across with a piece of tear and tape. Just because it's a really thin ribbon. Let's put it on across the middle. Yellow and greens. Yeah, that would look really nice, Laurie. I think that would make a great little um, anniversary card. Let's see. Let me get this level. Um, I'm going to pop it right across. Oh, just a minute. Uh, I won't put it right across, else you'll see it when I put this little piece in. 
So now I'm not going to put it right across. I'm going to put it just shy. And I'm going to do it in two pieces. And you'll see, otherwise, you'll see that little piece of ribbon as well. I don't want to see that. So let me get even as long as that. Let's move it down. There we go. And then I'm going to pop a little piece here. I don't quite know how long I want them. Let's cut them to 8 inches. I probably have a bit to trim off because I know the one side, the ribbon needs to be longer. Just because as we close it, the, the bow is going to be at the right hand side. So we just need it to be a bit longer. So, this is like sort of crafting on the fly. Um, I had thought about it first, I promise you. It's just that I'm, because I'm changing it all, I'm not too sure of the sizes. So bear with me. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be better than the first effort I did. Right, I'm going to move it so that this is not right on the score line. I don't want to be able to see it. Okay. And when that's closed, yeah, we didn't need to have this bottom piece quite as long, but that's okay. Right, and then this piece is the little closure that we're putting on, this piece here. But I'm going to line it up right on the edge of the card this time. No, Laura, she didn't because her husband, I'm not quite used to saying that yet, but her husband, um, he just started a new job and hadn't accrued very much um, holiday time. So they're looking at going away maybe in September. And I think, I uh, think they may be looking at Maui as well. But yeah, they're not on honeymoon right now. So he had to go back last week and then Anne-Marie just went back this weekend. Okay, let's squash that down. Now that's better because it's flush with the edge, it's not sticking right out. So let me see. So I've made that one better, because uh, I've narrowed it. I've made this one better because it's not sticking out. I won't be able to see that little piece there because I've made it shorter, so I've made that one better. This is going to go just on here, like this. And then our paper is going to go on this side just here, right up to the score line. Now, if you wanted, you could stamp an image in here as well, but uh, I'm not going to tonight. I'm only going to do the one lot of stamping because I've already kept you so long. Oh, Jane, <laughs> my mind wanders off all the time. <laughs> I thought you knew that about me by now. You've, you've been with me long enough to, to know that, you know, I have one idea. And then as I'm working through something, I think, oh, no, this would fit. Oh, no, that would work. So. I do like that side. That is pretty. But it's just a bit too busy for the front that I need. I need it to be... I'm going to put the darker side out. I need it to be like this, just so that our... Um, oh, oh, look, that's going to be just a bit wide. Let me just go there. Let me just try that. I think it might be just a bit too wide. Yeah, it is. I'm just going to take an eighth of an inch off. So I don't want it to catch. This one didn't catch. Okay. I'm just going to take a tiny weeny little piece off. There we go. You know, maybe that's why this sticks out a little bit. You had to have it a bit bigger to go over the flap. I'm not sure. I think it might be, you know. I think that's why it might have been a bit bigger. Because look, there's a tiny, 
tiny little border on it now. Huh. Well, who'd have thought? So I could change it. Or I could just leave it. I think I'm just going to leave it, actually. Because if I make it go in a little bit, it just looks like a nice little border all the way down. So that's why that piece is bigger. <laughs> okay. Well, it's quite the show this evening, isn't it? Just level it up top and bottom. Yeah. So obviously, if you do want this to go right up to this edge and not have a border, you have to make this just an eighth of an inch bigger because otherwise it won't fold over and if you try to fold it over I think you'll just bend it unless I made that unless I made that fold just a little bit bigger there as well but for this one I'm going to leave it I'll move it up just as far as I can and then I'll stick that down there we go Okay, so let's do some stamping. I've got pale papaya, I've got calypso coral, and I've got mint macaron. And I chose those three colours because they're the mint macaron is the green in here. Thank you, Jane. I'm glad it looks nice with a small border. So here's our little white piece that we did. I'm not going to do peaches. I'm actually going to do the flowers because of the flowers on the inside. Let's have a look. I need the, like the leaf section. I need the three little flowers. And I need, what goes in the middle? Like a little star. Oh, there it is. A little star burst. And then I'll put a sentiment on as well. Let's try the It's Your Day. Oh, I need, need my glasses, I think, to see this. It's Your Day. There it is. What does that one say? Um, let's celebrate you. Let's see if that's too big. No, that fits nice. I just, I liked the idea of this fitting right in that little piece at the bottom because I don't quite know how far down the flowers will go. So I'm going to use the smaller one. And I'm going to stamp it. Let's see, let's put a, let's put it on a block. And let's stamp it in memento, just so it pops out. There we go. And I'm just going to stamp it right across the bottom. I just need to pull it down a little bit. And apologies if all you can see is my head. Okay. And then we need a bigger block for the green. Yeah, I'm really sad, Jane, that it's going. So I think I could have uh, lived with it for another year. I love this set. Now this mint macaron, it'll be quite quite a dark green. But, uh, if you want it lighter, just stamp it off first. And then let's see how this is going to fit. I'm going to put it on an angle. There. Isn't that pretty? But you can have it lighter just by stamping off. Now we need these little flowers, so let's take these leaves back off, put them back on their page. And find our three little flowers. I'm going to put these on with the pale papaya, and then I'll do the little little tiny bit. Oh, where did I put that? Uh, where did that little tiny star go? Did I put it back? No, I didn't put it back. 
I might just have knocked it off my desk somewhere. I should have put it straight onto a stamp block, shouldn't I? Okay, I can't see it. You can probably all see it. Oh, look. <laughs> there it is. It's right on the edge of that stamp block. Oh, my. I should have stayed in bed this evening. <laughs> so. Oh, dear me. Will there be a new fruit set in the catalogue? Um, I don't, I don't know that I've seen any fruit. I'm not sure, Jane. Um, yeah, I honestly, I don't know. I've only looked at pre-order items, to be honest with you, and there wasn't, there wasn't a fruit set that I pre-ordered. But I haven't looked at everything else. I looked at a few bits to see um, what was going to retire. And then, um, I'm not sure. I will have a little look though. Anyway, let me see how these line up. Where do I want these to be? I think they go this way, with the big one at the bottom. If they don't, if they don't quite match up, I'll get the mint macaron pen and uh, go over them. Oh no, they'll look okay. And then I'm going to get a little Calypso coral and do the little little starbursty bits on the inside. And that will pick up that Calypso coral on the front, just, uh, just that little trim that we had. You could also put some little Demontes or something on as well. But I'm, I don't think I'm going to put any on this one. Let's just clean those. And I'll pop them away. And then this is going to fit onto this little flap here. And it means, oh, look at that. That's just perfect size for the length of that. And it means as well, I can put it a little bit further into the middle before I tie my bow. Okay, and because this is a, a sheer ribbon that you can see through, it makes it easier to see. Yeah, now let's have a look, how is this attached? This one was attached with dimensionals, so I will do the same. I'm just going to pop three down. We know that it's going to cover it, so I'm just going to put three on here. it up and then put this on let's move that little ribbon just so I know it's going to be straight yeah, that's a little bit further across than I want to take that bit off quickly now the dimensionals are on the back of here just because I peeled it off there we go And then let's tie this up. Let's tie it at that very right hand side. And then I'll cut that one long end that we've got. A slippery ribbon. There we go. Let's find my ribbon scissors. Thank you, Janet. Let's just see, I'm going to cut this one this way. I think we don't use the flower part of this often enough. And I probably will put like three little um, somethings on there. Let's see what some things we've got. It's a really pretty, um, pretty little shape for a card. I like that. And we only need something small, don't we? And let's see what we've got in here. You know, I might just put 
clear embellishments on. These are the same colours from the 2021 colours. But I don't I don't like those so much. Um, no, I don't want those. Champagne rhinestones. I think these are only the big ones that I left. They're very pretty, but no, I don't want those either. I think I'm just going to put three of the little rhinestones on. Just on here. Let's just put these. Make sure it's in the middle here. Does anybody else have this set? The peach set? is a really pretty little one okay and if you can bear with me for five more minutes yeah three little doodads <laughs> that's exactly right Janet yeah have you made much with it Jane have you made much with the flowers I tend to always go for the peaches but you know those flowers are really pretty let's make a quick envelope if you've got another five minutes to bear with me then uh, let's find Let's do these envelopes like we did at Christmas because that was really fast wasn't it and it only used a 6 by 12 piece of design series paper. So let's go back to our paper and I don't think it'll matter which way you cut it. So I've got my little instructions here, um, 6 by 12 I'm going to just cut it straight down the middle. six need to score at two inches from the top so let's have this at the top and this will be two inches here now it's only paper so don't push it too hard <laughs> uh, you're glad I'm not in my jammies though <laughs> Janet okay so two inches at the top and four and a quarter from the bottom so I just turned it round and we'll do four and a quarter there. And then it's three quarters of an inch on each side. So let's pop that in at three quarters. I'm going to do it this way this time. Okay. Then we can get rid of that. And let me see. Here's my two inch one. So see how it shows you to cut all of this out? Now I know you've seen me do these little envelopes before. I'm going to cut it on this side, look, it's just a bit easier to see. So I'm still on that two inch side. I'm going to go down here. You could use your bigger scissors too. Where's that one? Difficult to see. miter this a little bit just to make it easier to fold and then the same with this one we're going to cut down this whole line I wonder why I don't have my big scissors in front of me oh I know why I took them to the wedding so they'll still be in the wedding box I'm trying to think where they were hoping Hubby hadn't used them for something A couple of weeks ago he wanted to cut some carpet tape and I uh, said, oh, can I borrow some of your really nice scissors? Uh, no, not for carpet tape. So I'd never have been able to cut anything again with them. Okay, well let's move that one out of the way. I'm going to put the flowery side on the inside. Folding all of those lines. You could go over with them uh, a bone folder as well if you wanted. And then we're going to put tape or glue down here. Don't do the whole of this piece. 
um, because of course the top comes over there as well so you don't want that to be all glued now I'm just going to put glue down here so you could use tearing tape just happen to have this glue out so we'll use this don't put any on this edge only on the left and right sides fold it down I'm just going to go over that with my bone folder you're still drinking wine Laurie oh how I wish I was at your house I think I might go drink some wine too okay I'm going to put a little piece of tear and tape on there ready for when I want to have it closed And when I made these at Christmas for my Christmas cards, what I did was I put like a little white label on that. Oh look, I can just see an edge there. I'm just going to chop that off. I put a little white label on so that I could put people's names. And if the paper's really light like this one, you could probably just write straight on it. But I used lots of the really patterned paper. Okay, so there's a very quick little envelope and our card. So, okay, let me just scroll down. <laughs> you are funny, Laurie. <laughs> okay, so there we are. Let's get my original. So, it was a really pretty card and I, I loved learning how to do it, but I made so many mistakes. Um, the mistake I've made with this one is not having this little flap standing proud. Um, I, I just didn't like, I didn't like the look of that on the back. You see where that isn't level? That really bothered me. So what I think what you could do is score and then maybe an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch do another score. And that way you could have it flush and it would still come up and over the front. But I would like to say thank you to Rhonda for teaching me how to do this one a couple of years ago. Um, but I really like the revamped ver version. Okay, ladies. So I'm glad you like it. Thanks, Janet. I'll see you next week. I'm doing no more updates on my phone the day before or the day of a Facebook Live. Um, so, so next week, I'll be here right on time. <laughs> Take care, everybody. I'll see you all really soon. And thank you so much for your patience tonight and for joining me. Bye-bye, <laughs> everyone.